Welcome back guys. So today I'm actually gonna be redoing an old video that I did, one of my very first ones, and it is this garden trellis. So in the original video, it was very poorly made and I actually made a couple of mistakes. It's of people comment and they would ask for plans for this stuff. I'm going to show you exactly how to make this. You do not need the plans for it because I'm going to show you how to. I'm going to give you every single cut. I'm going to put everything in the description, but if you decide that you would like the plan, some people love to have the paper right in front of them. I actually have um, a plan made for this and the garden obelisk, obelisk, still can't say it right whatever this thing is that looks super cool with all the vines and stuff growing up. This thing, have plans for both of these on my shop. I'll drop the link in the description. All of this material is going to be made out of an inch and a half, so you can use two by fours and rip them down. Inch and a half material that is going to be ripped down to five eight. Go a little lighter than that if you wanted to do half inch. I like the five eight. It makes for a lot more sturdy, impressive trellis. So five eight material. My material will look a little bit different. If you follow my channel, you know I like to work with a lot of reclaimed material. You're gonna need five of the 72 inch long boards that are inch and a half by five eights. You're gonna need one board that is 34 inches long. Again, the same dimension as everything. Any wood that I mention will be the inch and a half by five eighths. You will need two boards that are 12 inches long. Okay, and these are gonna be the bottoms of our trellis. As far as hardware goes, you are going to need one and a quarter inch deck screws. So these things will not rust like the, uh, let's say if you're using just regular wood screws. So one and a quarter inch, I like to use the star head. Uh, deck screws. You will also need bolts. You'll need two bolts for the bottom. These are 3 8 inch bolts that are four inches long. You're going to need two of those. You're going to need a 3 8 inch drill bit. And you are also going to need, because we pre-drill and countersink all of these, a bit that will actually do both at the same time, or you're going to need a drill bit and a countersink bit, or you can countersink just with a larger drill bit. For this video, I'm just going to be showing you how to do it just with a regular drill bit and a countersink bit. The rest of the tools are just going to be drill, driver, wrenches. We'll use a couple clamps. So the first step is this. Have all of your parts cut. It does not take long to rip down this material. So once I have all of my parts cut, Cut. I like to pre-drill and countersink all of my parts right from the beginning. I don't like to do it as I am assembling. Let's start pre-drilling. So the first thing that I like to do is to take my five long boards and let's get them attached. That way that they're not just kind of everywhere we can get these together and out of the way. We just line them up and when you're going through these different boards, try to find material that has the least amount of knots in it as possible because we're going to be bending this. And any time that you have a knot in a piece of wood, it, you know, it kind of makes a weak point and we do not want a weak point in this but if you find one that has a big knot in it put it towards the center because it's going to have the least amount of bend the outside boards should have the least amount of knots or no knots at all if possible so we're just going to line this end up and then i like to put a clamp on once everything is lined up this is just going to hold everything together while we attach this by drilling our holes in the end and keep all of this from shifting. I like to put one on both sides. Okay, so this is nice and flush. Let's go ahead and put some bolts in this. Now these bolt holes are gonna be an inch and a quarter from the bottom and two and a quarter. Since these are three eighths bolts, I'm gonna be using a three eighths drill bit. Yes, it will be a little tight, but you do not want it to be loose. Now we will just put our nuts on. And now that these are ran through, you can actually undo your clamp. You can undo your clamps, turn it to the side to do your tightening. I'm just using two ratchets. Uh, just for speed. And there we have our five holes perfectly centered, drilled there. And we would do the same thing for our next piece. This cross member will only have three holes. Have everything marked, which way goes up. I'm not gonna do it on the long board because you get the point. 
So let's get these countersank. And again, when you're countersinking, this would probably be the fastest option for drill and countersink at the same time. But for this video, I'm gonna be using this little countersink bit because they're typically a little bit more affordable. So when we are countersinking, we just want to make sure that our screw head will actually fit and not stick up above the surface of the material. So when you're finding your countersink bit, just make sure that it will completely allow the screw that you're using to countersink. So let's get these knocked out. And there we have it. So another quick tip to speed things up when you go for assembly. Once you have these all cut out, instead of having all kinds of these screws that you're fumbling around with while you're actually trying to bend these different limbs of this. So before we go into the next step, we're going to get all of these screws just started. That way they're in place and ready to be fastened to the fans. Okay, so this is my main jig. And you really do not need all of this. Um, these are just little things that I've added on and I'll explain as I go to actually make this go quicker. This jig will actually help us to stretch and bend this trellis while we're screwing it all together. All of these screws are actually placed in the exact spots that they need to be to hold the limbs because they're gonna want to try to rebound back in because of the pressure that's being held against them. So. Let me show you how this works. Okay, so with our jig in place, I can line the bottom of our very first grouping that we did, the five that are bolted together, up with the bottom of this jig. And I have a couple just screws at an angle holding this in just to keep it from going back and forth. And this is the fun part. This is where you're gonna find out if you have any hidden knots or uh, any fractures inside of the wood when we go to stretch this out. The hardest one of this whole fan is gonna be these outside edges. So sometimes I like to actually take this screw out that I have to hold it into place. The bottom's not gonna move because I have two screws here keeping it from wanting to pull as I pull pressure this way. So I can just put a screw back in once I get this into place. The first one's gonna be pretty easy because there's not gonna be any tension. So I'll just take my very first limb and bring it out real slow to the other side of that screw. So it's locked into place. Now the next one that I want to do will actually be this one. And this one's actually gonna be the hardest one to get into place. It's not gonna be hard to pull, but if something's going to break, if it's going to give, um, it's gonna be this one, because it's gonna have the most pressure on it. So I actually like to take this screw out, then I'll have this ready for putting it back in once I get it to my point. And we just stretch. And there it is. And that will hold it into place. And now you just repeat the steps with the screws that are already in here. Just pull it to the outer edge. Pull it to the outer edge and the center one is lined up. The fan is actually formed now without anything else holding it into place except for the jigs. From the bottom of this trellis up, it's gonna be 29 inches into our very first cross beam and it's gonna be the five one. So it's gonna be 29 inches up. I'm just gonna set that there for a moment and then it's gonna be another 16 inches up until we get our second one. It'll be like this. And then our top one is 16 inches up from that. I'm gonna start by putting my top cross member on first. And I'm always gonna start with my center on each piece. That is where that screw needs to be in order for the rest of the screws to line up. I always keep a speed square in my pocket or close by because all of these boards need to be square with center. And this board will be our center point. This is why I was talking about um, in the beginning, while it was so important to make sure that this one stayed vertical. Okay, so for our next one, this is my 16 inch spacer. We're just gonna put this in our next board and we will square it with the center and our spacer.
And there we have it. This thing is put together. I mean, it's done. So another common question that I have was, how do you stick these things into the ground? A lot of people don't. They'll put them up against their buildings. They'll put them up against anything that uh, has a climbing plant. But for those that do want to put it in the ground, I would just do something like this. Just take a piece of my scrap that I had left over because these things are only, you know, seven foot long and throw a couple of screws in. And it is as easy as that. So there it is. Hopefully this helps to make up for the other video that I made where I made a few mistakes and the poor quality. So I hope this helped a little bit, guys. Thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time, go out there, build things, get off your butt. You've got this. See ya.